everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you guys 10 travel hacks that I have acquired over my past few years of traveling that I think you guys need to know for 2020. I didn't watch anyone else's travel hack video. I know there's a bunch of them on YouTube, but I didn't want to accidentally copy them or anything. I'm sure some of these hacks you've heard before, but I think some of these hacks you probably haven't heard before, especially the first one, which I was talking to a few of my friends before filming this, and my friends advised me to not share this tip because they thought it would be a little bit too sketchy to share online, but I still just don't think that it's that sketchy, and I think that it's such a good tip that's worth knowing about. So. Hack number one, this needs a few disclaimers, but I'll put the disclaimers at the end. So here's the deal. A lot of the time when you're traveling out of the country, the airline or the country itself will require that you have a return flight to prove that you are going to be leaving the country and not overstaying your visa. I do not condone staying over your visa. Do not stay over your visa. I have never done that and I will never do that because no, do not do that. Okay, I'm inserting the disclaimer here then. But, Here's the thing, I personally don't really love to plan. And sometimes when I travel to a country, I'm not sure how long I'm going to want to stay there or where I'm going next. So instead of booking a return flight, I hop on a website that has 24 hour cancellations such as Expedia. And I book a flight to show that I am exiting that country. And then after I receive all the confirmation emails and my booking reference and all that, I cancel the flight so that I don't actually have a return flight. But when I go to check in at the check-in counter and when I go through immigration, I can show them that I have a return flight. Okay, now that I said that, do not do this and then overstay your visa. The only reason why I do this is because a lot of the times I'm not sure what my plan is. I don't know what I'm going to be doing. Don't know how long I'm gonna to wanna to stay in that country. So I usually just wait a little bit to book my flight out. This is just a good hack if you wanna be a little bit more lax about your plans and you're not sure what your plan is. Don't waste your money on a return ticket that you're not gonna use. Just book it and then we cancel it. Moving on to hack number two. This is something that I use all the time and I talked about it in my travel horror stories video, but it's Kiwi.com and specifically Kiwi.com's Kiwi Guarantee. So Kiwi.com is just a flight hotel booking website, but they offer something that I think is really unique. So they have a guarantee that protects you for delays, cancellations, rescheduling, all of that. So if for whatever reason, for really any reason, your flight gets delayed or canceled or whatever, they will always find another way. You don't have to pay a dime. When I got stuck in London in my Travel Horror Stories video, they completely paid for me to stay in a hotel. They rebooked my flight for the next morning and everything was totally taken care of and I didn't have to pay a penny. And that has saved me a few times. So I really love to book with Kiwi. They're not always the cheapest. Sometimes Skyscanner is slightly cheaper, but if you're booking especially a flight with a layover and particularly if it's with two different airlines, getting the Kiwi guarantee is definitely worth it. So this next one takes a little bit more effort, but it can really pay off. So depending on where you physically are when you're booking a flight will determine what the fare is. So let's say that I'm on my laptop here in the US looking at a flight and then let's say Tim in the Netherlands is on the same exact site looking at the same exact flight. We could come up with two completely different fares. I don't really know why. I'm sure it has to do with international laws and taxes and things like that. But more times than not, depending on where you're physically looking, the fare will fluctuate a little bit. In my experience, because I've been booking here and in the Netherlands frequently over the past almost three years, I've found that more times than not, booking here in the US is always cheaper. Like I said, I'm not completely sure why, but sometimes it really can make a huge difference, especially if you're booking a really expensive flight. Sometimes the price difference is cheap enough where 
all want to book it here. So the way that you can do that is of course using a VPN and if you're totally intimidated by a VPN or don't even know what a VPN is, it's basically a virtual private network which means that you can kind of disguise your computer into believing that it's in a different country so that you can access different sites in different countries. If that is totally not an option for you, if you have a friend or a family member in a different country that can check and see if the fare is completely different, then that can really pay off sometimes. So I know that's a little bit of a tougher one, but if you have accessibility to kind of test different locations, like I said, it can really pay off. But moving on to hack number four, I would highly recommend downloading the XE Currency Converter app. It's basically, just as it sounds, an app that converts your currency. But what's awesome about it is it updates every single minute with the most real-time accurate conversion rates. And it also works offline. So once you load your current conversion rates, if you're out and you don't have data, you can always convert your currency. So let's say you're walking around the markets or getting in a taxi and you kind of forget what the conversion is, you can just type in this app and it'll give you the exact conversion. The last conversion I did was 11,500 Hungarian forints which is $37.31 in US dollars. And kind of on that same note, hack number five is to always use an ATM to get out money. So I've gotten a lot of questions from you guys. What is the cheapest way to convert your money? You can take money out in that currency before you leave in your home country. Like you could go to your bank and get Hungarian forints at your bank. You could go to the airport and exchange your currency for their currency, or you could take money out of an ATM. By far the cheapest, most cost efficient way is to actually go to an ATM because you're kind of cutting out the middleman. With that said though, some ATMs are really, really shady. So it's really important that when you go to an ATM, before you actually press accept to take out the money, they'll always tell you what conversion rate they're using. And some ATMs will completely screw you over. This has happened to me before, but it'll never happen to me again because I always check with this app to make sure that I'm getting a good rate. I forget what ATM it is, but it's kind of like a chain. I think it's called like your, I don't know. I'm gonna put a picture of the ATM right here. This ATM right here is known for being really shady. So in my experience, taking out money at an ATM that's affiliated with a bank is usually your best bet, but you kind of just have to see what's out there and make sure that you're not totally getting ripped off. Moving on to hack number six, keeping on with the theme of money here, I would highly recommend getting a travel credit card. If you travel a lot or plan to travel a lot, it can be so, so helpful. And if you don't have a credit card in general and you just have a debit card or a bank card, when you're traveling to a foreign country, oftentimes with just a debit card, you will be charged a foreign transaction fee every single time you swipe or insert your card, as we would say nowadays. And I didn't realize this for a pretty long time, and I always saw on my bank statement a little like 40 cents here and a dollar here exchange rate and foreign transaction fee, and I never really paid any attention to it because it was always such a small amount, but all of that really adds up, especially if you're going on an extended trip. So with a travel credit card, usually there's absolutely no foreign transaction fees, so totally good on that. And another really awesome benefit is that they have the point system. I'm not going to pretend like I'm a credit card expert, but the way that my credit card works is I get double points for every single travel purchase. So whether that's a flight or even when I'm in that country, almost every single thing that I spend money on in that country counts as a travel purchase because I'm making it in another country. There's also usually a bonus that they give you just for signing up for the card. So that can be 50,000 points, something along those lines, which right there can get you a free flight. So if you've been thinking about it, I would definitely recommend getting one. This next one I put in kind of for me, but also I'm sure it will be helpful for some of you guys. If you watched my travel horror stories video, you would have seen that I lost my passport during a connection in Portugal. I had my cat with me. It was like this big hole thing. So for Christmas, my brother got me this passport holder, but it's not just a passport holder. It has a tile 
inside, which looks like this. I had no idea what this was until recently. I'm sure some of you guys know. But this is basically like a little GPS tracking device. It kind of works like Find My iPhone. So this is connected to an app and it gives you the live location. And if you lose it, you can call it. Here, let's, I'll show you. So this is what the app looks like. And then you just press find. And it sings. And I think you can make this louder. I think I have it on a lower volume. But yeah, it's basically, for one, I would recommend getting a passport, what do you call this? Passport holder cover thing. I never had one on my old passport and my old passport looks like actual garbage. It's like moldy and disgusting. And I never really took good care of it. And then I lost my passport and I realized that I needed to like be a little bit more careful. So passport holder, the tile, probably not necessary, but could be useful, especially if you are notorious for misplacing things. I'm sure that this will come in handy. And yeah, moving on, I have a few more kind of phone related hacks that I kind of just grouped all together. I feel like most of them are probably self-explanatory, but I feel like I would mention it just because these are things that I do every single time I travel. So for one, I have my phone on airplane mode pretty much all the time when I'm traveling. I usually just use Wi-Fi everywhere I go. Normally, I don't feel like I need to have service. There have been times where I've been somewhere for an extended period of time and I have gotten a SIM card. In that case, you have to make sure that your phone is unlocked so that you can use a SIM card in another country. That can definitely be a really great option, especially if you're somewhere for a long time or if you're just nervous and you want to have the security of having data on your phone all the time. But something that really helps is downloading offline Google Maps. So you can go on Google Maps, you can select an area and completely download the details of that entire city or even country and it will download all the details of everything so that you always know where you are. And then we're at hack number nine, which also has to do with an app. So this is for my vegan and vegetarians out there. If you guys don't know, there's an awesome app called Happy Cow, and it's kind of like a mixture between TripAdvisor and Yelp, but specifically for vegan and vegetarian restaurants or restaurants that just offer vegan and vegetarian options. So wherever you are, you can just search what kind of awesome restaurants and cafes they have. I've used it almost every single place I've traveled and it's just very useful if you are looking for vegan and vegetarian food. Oh! Just gonna leave that over there. Okay, we are on hack number 10 and this hack is to curate your own, I don't wanna call it sustainability set, like your own little earth lover set. So, you know, we're all trying to be kind and good to our planet. So whenever I travel, obviously water bottle. It's 2020, we can't be buying plastic water bottles anymore. And even if you're in a country where the tap water isn't drinkable, more times than not, you'll be able to find a water dispenser where you'll be able to get drinkable water. I have this cute little water bottle that was actually perfect in my most recent trip through Europe because it's small, so it wasn't super heavy in my day bag and I was able to fill it up really often. The next thing you're going to need is a tote bag, any kind of tote bag. This one is really lightweight. It folds up to almost nothing in your suitcase, but this is so useful for so many different things. One, when you are walking onto a plane and you're trying to get away with just having a carry-on, if you have a few extra things that aren't fitting into your carry-on, you can always throw them in a tote because usually when you just have something over your shoulder, they're not going to say anything. So I always like to add a few little extra things into a tote bag. And then you can use it when you're traveling, if you buy anything for shopping, or you can use it for a beach bag. You just need to pack a tote with you because it's not something that you might think of but it will be very useful also you can pack an extra tote for your dirty clothes too okay the last thing in this little kit is of course cutlery this you need this if you don't have your own little cutlery set then you need to get one or at the minimum you can get one of those tiny little bamboo spork things that i think i've talked about before actually let me show you this is actually in my bag right now and it's this tiny little bamboo spoon slash fork 
and you will never need to use a plastic single-use utensil ever again. So of course there's so many more things you can add to this little eco kit, but those are my three essentials. And those are all the hacks that I have for you today. So thank you guys so much for watching. I feel like it was a little bit all over the place because I didn't really plan out what I was going to say before I sat down. But I really hope that these hacks are helpful. And if you use some of them, definitely let me know. I know the first one was a little bit sketchy. Don't tell Expedia that I told you about it. But yeah, with that said, I will see you in my next video. Bye guys!